Test one, two, three, one, two, three, up and down, jiggle. And the reason why And the reason why I did that and shook the camera all over the place is because the same camera and the same microphone was with me out in the field yesterday. And when we had uh, finished that route up, came back and I looked at the, the video footage, all the, pretty much all the audio past a certain point in time just completely trashed out in, in, in the video. <laughs> So what I'm saying is, is that the microphone that's attached to the camera just, wow, just went completely out. And the, n there was no internal microphones picked up from the internal mics or anything. It just went completely out. But the weird thing was, is something something was happening on my phone and, and, and the phone came on, did some stuff. So I, I'm telling you all this stuff now prior to uh, even watching the, the video that um, this is the re this is the reason why I'm doing this right here. I I came back, uh, you know, I, like I said, I came back, reviewed the video footage, and noticed it, and then so I decided to go ahead and make some mechanical tests for the microphone, and maybe thinking that the microphone had just, you know, just finally died out or went defect, or maybe the camera was maybe having some problems. So I, I touched the mic on it. The mic felt snug and it, it didn't feel loose or wasn't unseated or anything like that. So I went ahead and disconnected the mic, reconnected the mic, made some tests with it, shook the camera left, right, up, down, up, down, left, right, all this stuff. Uh, loosened it up, wiggled, the, wiggled the, the, the microphone out just a little bit, and it still worked fine. Everything worked fine to include this video right now. This video of the sound on it is is just fine and i don't think i don't think uh <laughs> i don't know it's just, it just seems like it's just par for the course out there and is it maybe something that's maybe intermittent happening with the camera i don't know you know we'll see with a little bit of time so i i do have my my eyes on it and and uh so we'll watch for any kind of intermittent issues with the camera so this one sec this one video will be a little bit longer. I'm going to chop it up into two, uh, two components. It, it has a lot of testing with it. And so uh, part two will have more testing. Part one will, will lead up to all the testing that, that we did. And, and then I'll, I'll cut it and then we'll start another video when the second video gets ready to come out. But uh, I hope everybody uh, will en enjoy the video. It's more based upon a little bit more science related stuff so i hope it's not too boring for for many people out there and i uh, hope you enjoy the video and thank you for your time yeah this is um and what we're doing is the path that we take coming in here is this way all right so we ingress coming in like like this uh, and so we're on the back side of it now and we're trying to Joey and I are trying to find out um, where it came from because it's clearly blocking the path that we use and um, it's it snapped over here and we're speculating that it had to have come from one of the trees over not saying that it didn't we're not saying that it was thrown here we're just saying we can't positively identify a source we can only we're, we only can guess it because i can't see i can't see With the trunk facing here instead of instead of the snap facing facing the other direction. Uh, yeah, so I know under under pressure and storms, trees can do crazy stuff. I know that, but I'm also going to say that this tree was subjected to 
an incredible amount of force. Yeah. I mean, you can see the the rip. Yeah, I don't think the wind would have twisted it. How it just fractured and ripped it and twisted it. And... So we don't know if it's the top of a tree or a branch. <laughs> <laughs> But the only thing we will be 100% certain on is it is blocking our path. That's for sure. Yeah, it is blocking. And it wasn't here before. Yeah. So let's Was that one here before? Uh, yeah, could be. I haven't walked yeah, it enough. Sure. I haven't walked it enough lately, but you'll make snapshots in your memory, and you'll, yeah. you'll know the way. You'll know the changes along the way. And as I said already, we'll, we will have stuff block this path that wasn't there the week before or the last time you were out here before. So out above all the places for this branch to fall, it falls in your path. Yeah. I mean, if it came from a tree, it could have fell 360 degrees and it could have fell any direction. And there should be an obvious sign of where it broke off. Well, right above it. Yeah, you might see stress, you might see stress and as you can see it clearly, I mean, there's so much fragmentation going on right here. Yeah. That I should be able to see it coming off from one of these tips absolutely. here. Absolutely. You should be able to see the twist and the gnarly stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like, almost like it was dragged here, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I, I didn't say it. Joey said it. But. Look at this You've this limb. Look off right here when it dropped on, I guess. Yeah. So the impact, the impact would have curled it up somehow, but that's that's strange. How? Well, it hit this and. Yeah, this is a sapling. This is a sapling. Yeah, it's hard. So it caught that sapling from this direction, which makes which makes me think that it came from this direction. Yeah. If it's natural, it yeah. makes me think it came from that direction, and I'm fine with it. I just want to see a gnarly spot, and I don't see a gnarly yeah. spot because it's blocked. That spot up there just doesn't look big enough. Yeah, like is it a match of the trunk? I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I can't see enough. More strangeness in the woods. I can't see enough. Debate trees all day long. Uh, yeah, we've been getting a lot of rain. The bypass was here. This is where we turned on the thermos cells, if I remember right, right here. I think it was right here where we did it because I remember looking through like the portal and you were on the opposite side and I said just stay there until I make it around okay so you can tell I didn't walk that way or anyway maybe I'm wrong but we we probably did go through that maybe it's on further I don't know let's see let's see Yeah, that's why I should just film this to make a document of it because some of this stuff looks different. Some of this stuff, some of this stuff looks new, and you won't see footprints most of the time, but you'll see sure you sure as heck see shit thrown in your way. Right. That might have been from us. Uh, that might have been from me last time breaking breaking sticks. Cause I'll do that. Okay, this is maybe the bypass right here coming up. Yeah, I believe this is the bypass. Yeah, I believe it was right here. Okay, so it's starting to, things starting to happen again. I took I took okay I do remember taking a photo of that hole yes. 
came right. all by itself. Right. So the phone came off lock on its own, and it uh, uh, and it came on by itself. It came off lock by itself, and it's talking about it's talking about um, when time ends. <laughs> Oh, no. When time ends. Wow. What? When time ends. Is that your actual timer on the Twinkle. Phone? Twinkle. Zero hours, one minute, and 29 seconds. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. And <laughs> it's on timer. And apparently it's got one minute and 29 seconds, and it, it's, it's on timer, and I didn't tell it to do all that. You want to start it? Um, See what happens in a minute 29? <laughs> Just an idea. I don't know why it's that. I don't that know. I don't weird. know why it's on that, but it's going down. Countdown. It's counting down. That is weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I always don't want to know. <laughs> are you no, sure guys? Are you telling me something today? Are you telling me something? You're telling me that I'm losing my mind right now and that my my and that my phone is on a timer going down when time ends. Osio. Da hitsu aganari. Kisaraji. All right, we're going to let the clock run out, guys, you know, and see what happens. If nothing happens, I'm okay with that. that is, I mean, how can your phone come on? You heard it come on from my set. pocket. Yeah, you say, what is that? <laughs> you heard it came on in my pocket, and I didn't push no buttons. I, I didn't set this up. Yeah. And of all things, why would the timer come on? I mean, you, you being my witness, you didn't see me set this up. I didn't rig this. We're gonna find out. What? I just thought I heard a whistle. Yeah, it's coming from the phone, but what the heck? What is it doing? So it's like an alarm of some sort. I don't know. I didn't freaking set this up to do that. No. Take the picture and put it back in your pocket. And there's no start and stop. There's no start and stop. It just says start. That setting. You I'm gonna your put it on that. Somebody? Yeah. I'm yeah. It, yeah. It called my phone's called. I'm gonna hold hold my phone in my hand till it goes on screen lock. That's a woodpecker. Um, I'm getting a strange vibe here today. I mean, how many buttons do I got to press to get the timer to run? I have to actually, I would have to, in order to activate it, oh, I would yeah. have to actually... Set the time. <laughs> okay, so... There's no way you could just press one button. Just no, not on screen lock. I'd yeah. have to, I'd have to look at it. And, yeah. But I, but I remember taking that photo and I, and I put the phone back in my pocket again. Just the, the timer's, the timer setting, oh, sh let me look at it. It's swipe to unlock okay so it's still locked right now so I got to keep my face away from it but the the clock timers way up here the camera buttons way down at the bottom so I mean I don't go around activating my timer okay so it's going in my pocket all right there everybody's my witness it's going in my pocket locked it's in my pocket locked and there's nothing else in my pocket my pocket's empty of anything I've had my phone for like two years now I didn't even know it did that when time ends and oh, you have never used your time I never no I use my stopwatch at work from time to time when I'm doing 
when I'm doing tests with equipment, right. when I use the stopwatch mechanism. I don't use that, that feature. Yeah. You've never even used that. No, I didn't even know it did that timer thing. And you can do a countdown backwards. And normally, normally when I am For your sanity, for your own sanity. So I rock. Oh, yeah. Yep. Clear the path. Got standing water now, finally. Yeah, it is supposed to be a swamp. I smell like sage. Something. Just for a moment there. It's not like sage. Mm, it could be these bushes to these plants out here. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> where or what are you talking about now? There's no could've. way that could have come down on its own, is it? I'm not saying that it could not have, but yeah. I do remember tying it in a pretty decent knot. Yeah. Did it just break? Maybe it broke. Maybe it just broke because it was attached by screws. Pretty strong. Twine. Well, there were screws on it. Maybe the screws just came loose. That's popular, yeah. And that's how it happened. Yeah, there's the stick in the ground still. Mm -hmm. Oh, they broke loose. The fasteners, oh. the fasteners broke. Yeah. Oh, it could have got pulled off. Huh? More than likely just snapped off. Yeah. The wind. Yeah, there was a lot Strong of storm winds. A few days there. Well, it won't do no good in this area. I might, check I, might can, I might can leave the camera up or not or, or readjust it. Are you going to check see if the top was screwed off? Or Are uh, full of energy? because of aquifers, because of they're full of energies for a lot of normal natural reasons. But we don't even know how much water is flowing below our feet right now. Absolutely. Yeah. We have no idea and water is tremendous amounts of energy. Tremendous amounts of energy and we are in a panhead of Florida. And this is probably the reason why so much things happen in this area is because of the amount of water and energy that comes from beneath the earth here. Right. A lot, a lot of water underneath. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely would take that with me. I don't want to leave stuff in the woods. 
I don't think they appreciate it too much. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't leave garbage in the woods for... I don't appreciate it. I hate to go out in the woods and find it. If somebody's bought a six-pack of beer or something, you sit there and drink it and throw the bottles in the ground. Yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah. Littering. All right, so we're getting ready to flare. The flare is over there. The flare has, uh, as it is running. It's filming us, and, it's, and we're the target of the flare. And we just want to see if anything around our area happens, whether changing of a temperature or anything like that. I don't know, but that's what we're doing. And uh, when this plane moves on out of the way, I'll do just do a quick pan. Show people the surrounding area around us. We're totally surrounded by woods. In the green swamp. I'm not saying where in the green swamp. shows you a full 360. I know I went through that real quick, people. I know you want to see what's going on around me, but I just had to document that for... And don't make kill, dancer. Oh, did you hear that just now? I heard something. Back, back that away. It was like, it was like a, I want to say like a knock sound. I hate using that all the time because I'm not talking about knocking on trees, but that's what it sounds like. Some people believe they do this, you know, blow out. You can make a knock that way, believe it or not. And be I, loud. It could be, it could be hand clapping. It could be a tree branch coming down. Anything, yeah. I would say that is a... I would say that sound was probably 200 yards away, maybe. It was quite a ways. It's coming to investigate. Well, it just happened to be when you were dropping out tobacco. Okay, so before we go on with the experiments, let me clarify some things on the experiments. And the experiments we will do uh, will obviously tie in with the findings that's going on with uh, Skinwalker Ranch and with the Rocky Mountain Ranch also otherwise known as the Clearview Ranch so we will be playing some recordings and the logic of the recording that we'll do with Katie's voice I have a recording of Katie's voice the logic is that, what was that? Okay, so it wasn't me. Over here. Sounds like that way to some way. What did it sound like to you? Sound like kids, like, like a kid voice. I don't know, but it, it was like that tone. There's something right there also. Could be a, maybe let's just say it. But let's just say it for so we don't. You hear the RF meter starting to increase. Those were frogs. Yeah. Normally frogs croak when stuff goes in their area. When things go, when you approach the area where the frogs are at, they'll start making a lot of noise. That was over here, and we heard what sounded like, um, I don't know if it was like a kid's voice or maybe it was birds, but it was along that type of... Probably coming in to check, see if it's you. It was probably along that faintness. It was very light. Yeah. It was right around when I was talking about Katie and my understanding of Katie. Okay, so I'll get to the point. Katie is the, the lady that lived on the ranch. Rocky Mountain Ranch, we, it's called Clearview Ranch in Colorado, the where they had the UFOs, the Bigfoots, and everything on. Yeah, see, I don't do 
talk okay. too much about those two okay. branches. I recorded her voice, right? And so the logic is, is that these areas are tied and they're connected somehow. And we can only kind of guess of how the connections take place. We don't know if it's Schumann resonance or not. We don't know, but these areas, these various ranch areas so far seem to have connections. And it isn't just the ranches. It's got to be other areas. Oh, so there, in other words, there's some kind of like a web, like a yeah. like a web connecting this stuff together. And if it's a web connecting things together, then transmission, energy and stuff can go along the path. And so I'm not getting woo wacky on everybody here. What I'm, what I'm explaining is, is I've, I've long thought that this is how uh, the ghosts of uh, Gettysburg, for example, how people are able to hear bugle calls in Gettysburg, how they're able to see aberrations and stuff like that. It's because there's a triggering event that takes place. So if you track with me on this, if you go back to the Battle of Gettysburg, a lot of a lot of bad things happened there. A lot of energy took place at Gettysburg. Absolutely. Okay, a bugle call, for example, is very prominent. All right, and so people today say they can hear things like bugle calls. Well, the bugler that took place 160, 170 years ago. I'm just guessing how many years ago it took place. What I'm saying is, is that those those particles that existed back then were imprinted by these frequencies. They were imprinted. In other words, some type of a memory. And I'm just merely coming up with a theory, okay? Yeah. Those particles that were in that area on the earth were subjected to conditions. They were subjected to conditions. Yeah. In other words, let's stick with the bugler call. And so the bugler calls, the battle takes place, a lot of energy ex is expended, people die, and the whole, the whole nine yards take place. Okay, what could happen today that could trigger a bugle call today, that someone could hear it? And that's what we're trying to find out. And that's out. what we're trying to find out. And I'm saying it's imprinted, is what I'm saying. There's a trigger and event that takes place with today that transcends the time that interacts to be able to for someone to be able to hear today what happened in time because time okay time knows no doesn't know the bounds yeah and i like what you're doing it this. takes a triggering event to to stimulate the time to be able to to release information and we really don't know what'll spark a reaction. Maybe one of those sounds you play. Or... Right. And what happened with Katie? Let me just make a clip. Right. Uh, right. And what happened with Katie was she was a girl when this stuff was happening to her on the ranch. So yeah. definitely time is involved. So as we play her voice, if the theory is correct, and if there is stuff that goes on in our area, which I do think there is stuff that goes on in our area that is in parallel with these other these other places these other ranches that have these yeah. these events these paranormal phenomena and simply by doing these experiments might yield us more information so let's just cut to the chase let's go play katie's voice a few times and try anything and see what happens yeah. maybe there is some type of uh something that that Reaches out. Yeah. What was the other things you were going to play besides Katie's voice? Uh, we will play the oh. Morse code. The Morse code. Morse the Morse code. code. The Morse code came out of what happened to us about a year and a half ago when Chris Reinhardt got that message on his phone. And you hear the meter going off again? I think I remember that video. Yeah, Chris Reinhardt. And the meter started going off when I utterly brought up his name. All I did was mention his name, and the meter started to move uh, a little bit. I think I do remember that, yeah. Okay. Anyway, on his phone was the initials of our names. Mark, Chris, Beata, Betty. And look at the meter. Just simply by mentioning that stuff. You, people can tell my phone is my phone's not doing anything, okay? I'm not touching my phone. I haven't touched the phone. Now, I'm not saying the phone doesn't reach out and do beacons. I do know phones do beacons. Right. 
But if it's doing a beacon signal, it should probably be screaming a little bit more than that if it's doing a beacon signal. In other words, the beacon is an affiliation that the phone needs to maintain into the network. It's part of the communications network. So the meter did not start moving until I brought up what you asked me, which was the, what is the Morse code about? Yeah. And the, uh, what was it, four, over four megahertz? It's still... You tried the 1.6 last time, didn't you? Yes. Let's put it right here so we can see it. Something's constant. That's a pretty good indicator that something is beginning to air. It's still low, but something is constant. And it started after we brought up, after we brought up the, you want to hold the meter? Sure. Lay your phone down so your phone's not, so your phone can't be skewed or anything. Or you can just lay it down. It doesn't matter. turn it off? No, you can leave it running. It's totally fine. Yeah. Totally fine. But the phone, didn't, the, the meter didn't start moving until we brought up what you asked me for. That's, and that's, that's, right. That obviously happened. Whether it was sheer coincidence or not, or was our phones doing something on their own? I don't know. I think it, sp it rose up when you mentioned the name Katie, too. Yes, it did, when I mentioned the name Katie, too. Now, the meter's on RF, and we'll take the meter and we're going to measure. I want to measure electro frequencies also, and I'll discuss what happened on Skinwalker Ranch and the significance of of the principles of that as well. Okay. So let's get on with the experiments and you hold the meter in your hand and uh, no phones are in our hand. Yes, I have to use the phone to play the recordings, but... Okay. So, uh, let's see. Let me make sure it's connected. I'm gonna say it's connected. Uh, that's me fooling with the phone, so it's going to move some. Yeah. Bluetooth is on. And, yes, the sound core is connected. Okay, so let's let things calm down again. Let me go back in here again. You want me to turn my Bluetooth off? I think it's on. You can turn it off if you wish. Just to be on the safe side. We do have a Bluetooth connection. We do, t we do have a Bluetooth connection going from my phone to the, blue the speaker over there right now. Okay, mine's off. So you're, it's off. I forgot to turn it off when I got out of the truck. So the phone is off or Bluetooth's off? Bluetooth's off. Okay, so Bluetooth's off. So it ain't coming from your phone then. What's it reading? It was just one point eight something. Now okay. It's now it's gone down. All right. That's relatively low. It could be the aftermath of you handling the phone. Okay. So let's get on with the experiment. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're going to <laughs> haven't touched anything. What's it reading? Seven point six four zero. Spinning around. Right when you said, let's get on with the experiment. Let's get on with the experiment. <laughs> I noticed that. It did say that. Yeah. All right, so let's get on with the experiment, and let's. Uh, hopefully I clarified myself on the logical reasons of why we're doing this and why we're bringing Katie. Katie, I uh, don't mean to trample upon you, but uh, you're part of scientific uh, <laughs> research in the Green Swamp here, so here we go. Uh, here we go. Remember me, Katie, my sister, and the three boys that were on this ranch? We are back, and we want to talk to you.
plan now. We know, we know there's a pathway, guys. So let's do the experiment again. So let's let's do the experiment again because we know that there are connections to these other areas, and this is what we're trying to we're trying to test. Show us something on the meter. Here we go again. All right, we're gonna go with uh, Katie again. Remember me, Katie, my sister, and the three boys that were on this ranch? We are back and we wanna to talk to you. that when the response came back that they weren't they weren't you know how it is entertainment they put music into it and they were all they were all excited I wish I could have got more of the response like the whoop you can hear it on there where the response came back it started to come back but basically they were trans they were basically they were transmitting her voice on the 1.6 gigahertz band and that was a scare wall that was at Rocky Mountain Ranch where they okay. did that. This the same thing as Clearview. They were transmitting her voice. And then they got they had internal uh, FM radios, like regular radios and stuff like that, with microphones rigged up inside the house is what they said. And they were just letting letting those things be on. They had microphones by them and so they heard a response come back on that band so whether it's all hokey pokey or whatever uh whether they they rigged it up or whether they faked it or whatever the case may be it doesn't matter but i do i do know a few things about katie that i won't share that makes logical sense to me why we're doing this right now so let's do it again let's give katie about a good couple more chances here okay. so that i noticed that meter kind of like perks up every now and then when i yeah. mention her name <laughs> 